Hello people, and welcome back to another City Skylines mod tutorial. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to be looking at the Themes Manager mod, which allows us to create custom districts that only allow certain types of buildings that we can specify to spawn in that district, and just make much more uh, customizable looking areas in the city. So very much like our Intersection Marking Tool tutorial, where we will run through the interface of the mod, what everything does, and some issues that you might need to be aware of as well when using this. Otherwise, let's get started, shall we? Okay guys, so once you've turned on Themes Manager in your Content Manager section at the main menu, come into your districts and paint out a district over the area that you want the theme to apply. And this is going to give us a regular district. Clicking on the district name, you will see this option here for themes. You want to hit this. This is going to bring up uh, the themes for this particular policy. You want to hit Enable Theme Management for this district, which will allow all of these themes here to be applied to this district. We'll have a look at these in a minute. And there's an option down here for Theme Manager which is the main screen for the mod that we're having a look at today. So very much like our Inception Marking Tool tutorial, we'll run through the interface, we'll make a theme together, and have a look at some issues that can stop the theme from actually working. So along the top, we have all of our different types of zoning available to us in City Skylines, residential, high low density versions, office, tourism, farming, oil, etc. We're all familiar with these icons at the top. And these are just to include or exclude items of this main list, so we can hit none. This will bring in no zonings. We can click one of them, which will bring in only high density residential. We can also include just high density commercial. So you can filter through various types of zoning by hitting these icons at the top. You can also filter by uh, default assets that come with the game and DLCs. You can go by custom assets and you can also filter by clones, which I have none. So this list is empty. And the box next door is just to include or show excluded items that are in this list. List here on the left is your themes that you have either downloaded or made. There are a couple that come preset with the game, such as the European Suburbia, which is the European Suburbia pack, the European, the American Eclectic theme is a downloaded one from the workshop. And up here in the uh, top search box, you can also search for the name of the asset. So I know if I wanted to filter out a lot of my American Eclectic assets, I can just search in American and then it will bring up all the assets with American in the name. So. Nice, easy, simple ways of filtering out different assets here. So let's make a new theme together. So we will come into new theme and we will call this whatever you want, just something that you will recognize. So we'll go for prepare to theme. Uh, you will notice that when a theme has no buildings in it, it will have a yellow name on the left hand list. So you know that there's no buildings in that theme. So one of the things that I've used themes manager to do is to create a district style of university uh, city residential assets because the game didn't actually come with that for some reason and um, so we can make that together we can go for college because i know that all of the uh, university city content creator residentials are called college park or some variation of that okay so we can make a theme that is entirely compromised of university city residentials however i can see that there's also some workshop assets in this theme as well so i might not want to include those i only want the stuff that comes with the dlc so I'm going to say uh, only include a default assets within the search list and you'll see that those workshop have now been removed. Okay, likewise, if I make this custom, it only filters in the workshop assets. So I want all the default themes and I'm happy for all of these to come in. Again, there's more filters here. You can go for uh, just level five assets if you want. You can go for specific size of actual zoning lots. So there's lots of filter options to get through these, but I'm happy for all of these to be included within the prepare to theme theme. So I'm just going to hit all at the bottom and these will now all be included. Okay. Really simple. And you'll also notice that prepare to theme now appears under the themes uh, screen on the right hand side here. So I can apply that theme to that district. So that's how we make a theme. Okay. You just filter the assets out for whatever style you want. So we'll make another theme together and we're going to call this green cities theme. So I just want my green cities theme to have uh, eco residential. So let's make sure we just filter out for these assets. And again, you know, if I only want four by four assets that are spawning in here, then I can filter through these, which will give me every single variation of uh, green cities uh, four by four. Okay. So again, I'm happy for all these to be included in the green cities theme. So I can just hit all. And again, you can just filter out each of these assets by hitting the tip box on the left hand side of the central list. At this screen over on the right here, the spawn rate, so the base value here is 10, and this is referring to kind of how frequent this building will spawn into your theme. 
I never really change this. You can take it up to a value of 100, which will make it, you know, more likely to spawn within that theme if you want one particular asset appearing quite often. Like I said, not something I really change. I find that Themes Manager distributes the assets pretty evenly across the district anyway, but you can mess with spawn rates if you like. And you can also hit Bulldoze All here at the bottom as well, which will get rid of every asset in the city that this one appears. So I know that I have a couple of these over in my Green Cities Residential here. You can see now I've hit Bulldoze All that some of those spaces disappear where the asset was located. I can probably do the same thing here again as well. Let's go ahead and find another one. And then you can see, as you hit Bulldoze All, that all the buildings within the city will disappear. That's quite a severe setting to hit Bulldoze All because it's going to remove assets that you have placed elsewhere in the city. It's not just exclusive to that theme. So, you know, if you're looking to get rid of some of the more horrible assets, you know, for example, I know uh, some of the ones I don't like immediately. Uh, some of the vanilla ones that are placed over here. You know, some of these ones. So this can be a good use of Bulldoze All to get rid of all of these sort of horrible vanilla assets if you haven't excluded them already. So, it's kind of a useful tool, but it's quite niche. You won't really get that much use out of Bulldoze All. But that's what the button does anyway. Okay, so now that we've had a look how to make a theme, again, this is all pretty simple stuff. Once you click around for in a little bit, you'll figure out how to filter our assets and get different styles of zoning in. And we'll talk about something that can stop a theme from working. Uh, so we've made a Green Cities theme here, which was all of our uh, 4x4 Green Cities residential stuff. I'm going to apply that Green Cities theme uh, to Black Star Square. Okay, and now as we begin to zone in. Now bearing in mind that there are high density assets in this theme as well, so I will need to provide uh, the zoning for those to come in. But as I zone in, you'll notice that nothing's growing and this isn't how theme manager is supposed to work. So you might be thinking, well, I've made a theme, but now nothing's spawning in. If you specialize into something that needs a specialization from the base game, such as any of the vanilla farming, any of the uh, tourism or nightlife and green city stuff, so because I'm playing with a Green City style theme here, I still need to apply the self-sufficient building specialization to the district. You will notice as soon as we do that, the theme will now start to work, okay? And it's only going to pull in the assets that we've specified uh, within that list. So it's a really good mod for getting unique looking districts. And of course, don't forget you can download themes off of the workshop already. You don't have to always make your own. I will also take a look at another one of uh, my own custom themes, just so again you can see how I would apply it. And um, it has actually already been applied uh, to Imperator Square over here. So you know I have another district. I can hit themes and see that this one has my rural uh, U.S. residential theme in it, which is all of the uh, University City uh, content creator assets. You know, because these University City ones don't actually get their own theme. Uh, they only spawn in randomly in the vanilla pool uh, without Themes Manager. So this is what I've done for this one. Okay, and there's really endless variations, you know, for themes to be customized and include various different sorts of, you know, zonable assets. You know, they all have to be zonable. You know, you're not going to get unique buildings spawning in a theme or service assets or anything like that. They do have to be, they do have to be growable, I suppose, for them to appear in Themes Manager. But uh, that's kind of really the basics of the mod. Um, there's not kind of too much here. You know, we have Rural US Res, which is another, you know, asset list that I've pulled in all the College Park assets. There's you know, the European Suburbia Pack um, has its own theme here as well, and you can filter out all these assets. Uh, it's a really great quality of life improvement. It gives you much more control over how a district and area of your city looks. I'm a big fan of Themes Manager. So this shot right here, of this suburb is using the American Eclectic theme. So you can see we have all of the American Eclectic assets. You will also notice that my frame rate is taking a big hit here. And um, when you start to use a lot of these American Eclectic theme assets in particular, they do take a big chunk out of your frame rate. It's almost to the point now where I'm like struggling to be in this part of the city. You can, you, I'm hoping that's coming across on video, just how kind of janky the frame rate is here. So they will eat into your frames pretty heavily when you start using them in big collections like this. You can see as we move into the green city suburb here, we are, we become a lot nicer, all right? This is exactly the frame rate that we're after. 
So there is another thing as well that can stop a theme from working, and this is having no level one buildings within the theme. So let's come back into our green cities theme here, okay? And I'm going to remove all of the level one assets here, all right? Let's go for, let's just filter to level one actually. There you go, and then take them all out. So I've removed those assets from my theme now. I'm going to delete all the zonings. If you do change a theme or add in a new asset in the theme, you will need a building to level up in order for that new asset to come in as well. So now that I've deleted my level 1 assets, you will now notice that nothing is spawning. Because we're still zoning here and we're still playing with growables, you still need to make sure that there's at least one level 1 asset for each type of zoning that's in the district. Otherwise, you know, the game needs a level 1 asset to start the, the area with, right? To start the zone. So you see nothing's growing now. We'll come back into Themes Manager. I'm going to go for my green city residential again. I'm going to go for a level 1. Again, you can exclude assets if you want here. Uh, I'm going to in now include a couple of residentials there. And then a couple of level 1 residentials down here too. And then as the theme amends and comes in, you'll notice that buildings start to spawn in again. Okay, so really important that if you're making themes with growable assets, that you include at least one form of level 1 building per type of zoning. Otherwise, the zoning will never be able to get started because there's no level 1 for it to grow. I hope that makes sense. Hey guys, that is going to do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. And also, if you have any follow-up questions from Themes Manager, uh, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to try and get back to you with these mod tutorials. And I'll also leave uh, a link down to this American Eclectic theme on the workshop below as well. Like I've mentioned, do just be careful with American Eclectic. My, uh, my PC is pretty beefy and it still struggles with this many of these assets in. It does eat into the frame rate. But maybe you have a different experience than me. But either way, Themes Manager is a great mod for creating these custom districts and bringing uh, much more visual distinction between different areas of your city. Uh, super handy mod, especially for playing with like the University City content creator stuff, which we never got a theme from that DLC for for some random reason. But Theme Manager can fix it now. And you would have seen the extent to which we've used Theme Manager in ILOS here as well, you know, to create these kind of sprawling, never-ending American eclectic suburbs. Really makes a difference to the aesthetic of the city. Uh, but otherwise, we'll, we'll leave it there. I'll thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.